Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Recreation Parks Advisory Committee. I welcome all the members here tonight. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. And can I get uh, everyone had an opportunity to look at the agenda today? Motion to approve. Oops. Second. Any nays? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Uh, we move on to the approval of minutes from January, or excuse yes. me, from Mar from March. Sorry, did I make myself? Motion. Any amendments to it? Anybody? Motion to approve. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right, we move on to the director's report. I'll go ahead and start that off for us. Um, I want to make you aware, uh, mostly what I want to talk to you about is some of the landscaping that you're seeing us do around the city. Uh, Huff Drive, as we've talked about in the past, Huff Drive, the parkway, in the 17 interchange, we've we've kind of had a little change since we've last talked. You know that those areas were installed through a contract with uh, a private organization. Uh, traditionally, those areas were maintained by the contractor for a year. In this case, we're maintaining those areas for from actually from about two months ago forward. So just be aware of that we, we, uh, we've we taken on quite a bit of responsibility there that we weren't initially aware we were going to do that. Uh, but we are doing it. And uh, when you see those areas, those are all maintained by us. The other thing you need to be aware of is on S Highway 17, where uh, the Kettle Diner is and uh, our gateway, those islands that were done maybe a year and a half ago. We know they need mulch in those islands. We're trying to keep them kept up as, as best we can right now. Uh, we're trying to work through some training obstacles for us to uh, when we go out and remulch those islands, we're literally going to have to shut down traffic to do that. We'll have to shut down a lane of traffic. Uh, there are departments in the cities in the city that can assist us with that. We just kind of have to work around their schedule. So in the meantime, we're trying to get our staff trained so we won't have to work around somebody else's schedule, which will be more convenient for us. It'll be beneficial for everybody involved and obviously more efficient. So uh, our job right now in those areas are to make sure we keep them looking as good as possible until we get into a position where we're able to shut those lanes down in a safe manner. So be aware of that. Um, Obviously, from my end, jumping into our park side, uh, as, as you'll hear from Susan, baseball season has started. So for us, what does that mean? We are lining fields, dragging them, cutting them on a daily basis, generally uh, anywhere between 8, 10 to 12 fields a day uh, during the week. So uh, our staff is uh, going as strong as we can right now. Uh, obviously, it's great that it's raining outside. That's the good news. The bad news is when it stops. The grass is going to grow even harder. The weeds are going to come up even stronger. So, um, you know, with the good comes the bad. Uh, so that's where we're at from the park side of the house. Uh, one other thing I do want to talk to you about, that's, or, or a couple things I do want to talk, you, talk to you about that's happened recently. We've talked in the past a little bit about landscaping potential on Western Boulevard. The city is, is working... Uh, with the Department of Transportation, uh, working with uh, that group to try and secure some funding for Western Boulevard, especially the extension, to start landscaping those areas, uh, basically in similar manners to what you see on Huff Drive and the Parkway and the interchange. Uh, that That's being done with Anthony Prince, who's the Senior Transportation Director. And um, we feel pretty good about uh, hopefully getting some money with them. Now, we have uh, received some funding for the Piney Green area, uh, which meets up to Highway 17 in front of Moore Buick. If you'll recall, we used to have a gateway there. And we did a lot of work at that gateway a couple of years ago. And through some lack of communication, within a month of us putting about $20,000 worth of plants out there, and that's when the work at the Gateway started, and they you know, had to come and take those out. Now, when they did that, they promised us we're, we're going to make this right, and they're doing that. So for us, on the front side, you know, you're going to see in the next year, hopefully sooner, but definitely within the next year, plans as well as hopefully impl implementation of landscaping 
if nothing else, being install, installed at the gateway area of the Piney Green, and again in front of that Moore Buick area, and, and really in front of Empire Boulevard. If you're not familiar with that, that's the entrance into um, Sunset. Well, it's not really Sunset Acres. It's into the Commons, actually. Northside. Yeah, into North Sides, exa exactly. Um, so be aware of that, and then hopefully, as we continue to move forward, Western Boulevard, which will make a you know, a dramatic difference in the city if we put landscaping out there if we're able to achieve that goal. And I, and I think we are going to be able to. So just be aware of that. Uh, one of the things that we've done recently I wanted to make you aware of, if you haven't noticed or if you have time to ride by, is in the downtown area right off Court Street, there was a traffic island. Have you seen it, Homer? I see you smile. I was in jury duty, and I saw them working on it. <laughs> I had well, that down. You know, we call that from our world low hanging fruit. There's a traffic island there, and we maintain it. And it's, you know, it's in a little bit of state of disarray there. And there's not a whole lot you can do in those areas for a quick fix. But one of the things we were able to do there were, were to dress it up a little with some flowers. And it took us literally a day and a half of some staff time over there to do it. And the bang for our buck, and I think the city's buck is well worth it. So much so that the day we were out there finishing up, we had some business owners walk out and make, let us know that they're going to, you know, we're going to go, obviously we're going to go buy it and make sure it's watered, but they're willing to water it, you know. So that's great when we do work like that to see the community have buy-in to it and say, hey, we like what you're doing here. Uh, when you're doing the other three behind and, and we will do those islands they're just not they're not as low-hanging fruit that we can get in and get out fairly quick so be aware of that if you have the chance when you're in the downtown area and the other thing in the downtown area you need to be aware of is uh, Riverwalk Park um, it doesn't look so good in the uh, second pod right now and it's not gonna look good for a while um, because uh, it hasn't rained, we've not been able to get sod, but that's the best news for Riverwalk right now is the rain. We talked with our sod farm today, we'll be getting it next Tuesday, so we'll begin the process of laying sod down there and having that place dressed up. So if, obviously if you have comments about that area today or tonight, that's fine, but just so you know why we haven't been able to do it, uh, they wanted, you know, they. To their credit, the, the, they wouldn't give us the sod because they knew it would be in bad shape and it wouldn't look good and it would take too long. So uh, they're not going to harvest it until later on in the week after the rain, which again will be beneficial to us in the long run. And, and really, that's the plan here. We want to do it, but we want to do it right. You know, so we want to make sure that whatever sod we get is, is is good sod. In our world, that's that's really what's going on i will kind of segue into susan's world and i know someone uh, mentioned earlier about staffing and city and and temp agencies i will tell you i'm not going to get into the city and temp agency see things right now but what i will tell you is we from the park side of the house we basically are continuing to use the temp temporary agencies i will tell you a little surprisingly and i don't know what it's a reflection of the temp agencies are struggling with this uh, we are having trouble filling out workers we're having some difficulty doing that and i think susan's feeling that a little too but uh it's and i know you see on your agenda you've got we've got some staffing challenges and uh, there's a part of me that's very nervous with it raining because it's going to get you know we're going to have to be a little more aggressive than we've been because things you know the grass is going to be more aggressive and we're, we're, we're facing some challenges with that right now, and we're, we're working with both, a, you know, we, we use two agencies, so we don't put all our eggs in one basket, and we're working with them trying to find ways to get more people in the door, you know, and hopefully as college is ending up for, the, for this semester, hopefully we'll get a couple of college kids or even people out there that need a job, you know, we're, we're, we're actively looking, so be aware of that. Sure, sure. If uh, they can bring the slides up, you got it. Yeah. So, one of the tasks we took on was doing some work on the amphitheater, and you can see right here. If you haven't had the opportunity to go by the amphitheater, I'd encourage you to do so. And uh, you can see. Okay, no, you can't. So. You, so, yeah, they need to. Turn. Can you turn the writing on, Kevin? Oh, there we go. Thank, Thank you. You, right you can here. see. What are you trying to do? It's still not writing. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, you see, hopefully, there's some steps going up on the hill in the middle of the picture. Uh, Can you see the mouse moving there? Anyway, there there are four sets of step there steps there. There we go. <laughs> Magic behind the scenes. Um, those weren't there, obviously. You know, we had a contractor come in and grade the property, and uh, the park staff. You know, Scott Perosi, who you've met, I think, once or twice before, has some expertise, and we've got some other staff members, but Scott definitely leads us in this area where we're able to put some pavers in and give the amphitheater a finished look. Um, it's a very nice amenity that, uh, you know, would have cost a lot of money had we had to contract that out, and I mean a lot of money had we had to contract that out. Uh, so it's nice to have that on staff, and it's nice for us to be trusted enough to utilize that expertise and, and use that knowledge to, to make something that we have in the city look better, and not only look better, but do it as, you know, when we talk about being efficient, doing it efficiently with money and, and making it look good. So we're very happy with that, and you can see the steps a little bit better from here, and then you also see uh the stormwater pond there and you see as you're familiar with uh jim especially as pat donovan potts and her staff and some of the engineering people putting in the wetland plants that go around the the uh the stormwater pond there which is very important and and uh, i know they i think they planted three thousand plants uh last week out there so again if you haven't had the opportunity to go out to this area uh you need please take a minute and do that. Uh, you can see here, and uh, you know, I got to tell you a quick story about Scott. Scott's very much a perfectionist when it comes to the pavers. You know, he's just like, he gets, you know, kind of stuck because he wants it to look so good. And he had some trouble in the beginning because when the, when the hill was initially, um, when they moved the land, you know, he says, I can't put the wall up straight. I can't put the wall up straight. The land's not straight. You know, we're going to have to rework the, the, the dirt. And I said, no, no, no. I said, you know, it's okay that the wall's not straight. We kind of makes it look like it's been there, you know, so go ahead. But it was funny working with him. He's, he is a bit of a perfectionist, which is a, a compliment to him that he was having a hard time going, oh, I want to make it straight. And I said, oh, it's okay. So, uh, but there are steps on there. There's four sets of steps. It's really nice. And uh, when you go out there and you see it, just remember, I mean, uh, you, you know, employees from the city did that. And that's a big deal. And we've estimated that, the, between the materials and the labor of those four walls, that's about an eighty thousand dollar job, and we spent probably about eighteen grand on it. That's a big deal. You know, that's a that's a very big deal. So, one of the neat things, you know, I heard somebody ask, and I know I'm going to get a little out of my area more in Susan's, and and I, I, it's probably as good of time for us to segue from one to the other. <laughs> Uh, are we going to have movies out there this year? I don't think we are going to have movies out there this year. There are still some asphalt work that needs to be done out there. There's concrete work that needs to be done out there. And most importantly of all, there's no power out there at this point. Now, those things are coming. And what we, you know, again, not wanting to speak for Susan, but what we don't want to do is schedule something, right. tell everybody we're going to have it, and then us not have it because those things a b and c aren't done so we're taking the approach that the best thing for us to do is wait until the spring of next year and then we'll move forward from that point point. and i'm going to leave it right there and let susan take over from there no it's fine yeah he's absolutely right um and i'll just piggyback uh the electrical conduit is being put in as we speak and that is by another city crew so alan baker with facilities maintenance is doing a lot of the um the electrical conduit and running it so that Progress Energy, I believe it's Progress Energy, can come in and, and do some more work. But um, kudos to uh, all of the city crews that do such a great job with their expertise in getting that done. So we're excited. We're um, seeing it shape up. So this time next year, when I come back and tell you about our great movie, like we just had last Friday night, which I'll get to in a minute, um, it will hopefully be at our amphitheater. And we'll have a huge crowd like we did on Friday night. And um, we're, we're thrilled. So uh, lots of work is being done um, to, to get this one up and running. Um, just a little bit of um, housekeeping elections. I believe that is at our next meeting. So at the meeting in July, Amanda, yes. we'll have to re-elect. Re-elect our um, chair and vice chair. Um, 
you can serve <laughs> two consecutive. So you've served one year. So they can, again, nominate you to serve a second year. And the same with your vice chair as well, or however the board decides to go. So there you have it. <laughs> I'll bring my check. Up. Something tells me you won't be running out. <laughs> you won't have too much competition, but that's okay. Um, and then I wanted to thank everybody that came out to the uh, the meeting that the um, city had for all of the advisory uh, committees. Uh, we had a really good turnout for those of you who came out. I think so. we had a really good turning from our department. So I appreciate you coming back. Hopefully, hopefully you found it interesting, not just from our standpoint. With hope, hopefully you knew some of that already, or that you know wasn't too much of a surprise to you. But I thought Lily's was also informative. I got lots of feedback that it was informative. So, but if you have any feedback um, as far as that event goes, or some thoughts, if you like the location, you like the food, or or or. Um, please let us know because that's something that we can certainly take back to city management and adjust it, reevaluate it, um, you know, and then go from there. I think um, the conference center was a new location for us, but it housed us well. But we welcome your feedback for those of you who came. So thank you. So moving on. Um, yeah, so at that meeting, I did do a little bit of a presentation as far as pools go. We have had lots of discussion on public pools. Nothing new to this group here, nothing new to this group here. And what I was able to do is quite a bit of research on what it's going to take for the city to have a pool and compare it to a, a, a range of pools, everything from your just your outdoor seasonal to your indoor um, basic pool to your indoor extensive pool to your water park. Looking at, you know, um, what we would call, for lack of a better term, swag numbers, what it would cost to operate it and what it would cost as far as um, you know keeping it up to build and to operate so I did a quick presentation and uh, that's what I did at that and then what we also did was we segued into the opportunity for a public private partnership Holiday City has a, a really nice pool they've done some extensive renovations to it Holiday City is the location next to um, Northeast Creek Park uh, we've been in contact with them, and it looks uh, to council approved on Tuesday night for us to move forward as far as a lease and in, in, in going in together with using their pool for a public pool for our citizens. So it would be a public pool. We're going to operate it. They're going to maintain it. And it would be a public-private partnership that we would uh, enter into for the summer months. It's a great opportunity for us to kind of, no pun intended, put our toe in the water to feel, um, to see what the public demand is. If if it is overwhelmingly successful, then that tells council, you know, one thing. If not, then that tells them another. So I think it's a great opportunity with, without us investing a lot of funds up front to build a pool just to kind of experiment. So let's see here. This is the uh, entry into the Holiday City. Uh, it's a nice pool. These are pictures of the pool. Like I said, they did some really nice renovations. They've completely repainted it. This picture was taken at least two months ago. And as you can see, even though it's not open at that time, it's crystal clear and it just looks really nice. And that was um, a warm day in February, I want to say. They have a kiddie pool where everything is fenced off at per North Carolina um, North Carolina standards. Everything is up to up to code as far as that goes. What we're proposing is a uh, starting in June. We have put June 30th because I feel confident that we'll have lifeguards in place by then. If we can start earlier, we will. But the idea is to have two lifeguards and attendant on duty Monday through Saturday from 10 to 4. The reason we have it going until 4 is because we want to be able to shut the pool down, let it get tested, let it uh, let it let our people get out and our people say meaning the public get uh, vacate so that Holiday City can open it to their residents at 5. The idea is that we have to kind of vacate it completely so that they can open it back up and give some breathing room in between the two groups coming and going. So 10 to 4, and then Sundays it would not be open to the public. It would just be for their residents. And um, we would charge based off of uh, child versus adult. We discussed a couple of different methods on that, but at the end of the day we just wanted to make it simple. And easy for us, you know, for the citizens. So, one dollar for children, two dollar for adults. You know, um, we also went through and um, estimated all of their previous costs on chemicals, 
and their maintenance. So we've estimated what it would cost us. So we've got for an average of uh, chemicals about five thousand dollars. As you can see, these are just some of the rules they already have up. Those are all pretty standard. We might adjust them a little bit if we do. We will update the sign for our uh, for our standards. Obviously, this says no adult supervision. We will staff it and we will have supervision. So that's for them, and then we'll adjust it for our staff when we get in there and and, and operate it as a public pool. Again, this was basically a breakdown for council to take a look and look at our options. We could go in there and technically operate and maintain the whole thing from beginning to end. We do have certified pool operators that know how to do that sort of thing. We are familiar with running a splash pad. A pool would be a new venture for us. So we felt like option two, which is basically letting them maintain the pool. They're good at it. As you can see, it looks good. The gentleman there that runs it does a fine job. Um, let them do that and we'll uh, reimburse them for those services and we'll just maintain the operation side of the house as far as main, uh, uh, public pool. Again, average cost for him is about 5000 Average cost for chemicals is about 5000 The remainder is going towards staff. We've got a breakdown on a head lifeguard, a lifeguard, and attendant, and that equals about another 10000 or 12000 or so, 12000 for total staff. So all in all, you're looking at about $22,000 for the summer for us to operate it. Um, to a public pool and council felt like that was reasonable enough uh, to uh, to do that and you know like I said see what see what demand that gives us and go from there yes sir how many people can you put in that pool what's the restriction on well people they have I don't, it's not on this list no um, I, I think their number is actually higher than what I'm comfortable with my comfortable right now is about forty-five, fifty. I think somewhere listed they have like 75. But for us, we're not going to quite go that high. <clears throat> it's a large pool. It can accommodate. What, what happens to the holiday, city, the holiday city people? Can they come there during the day too? Yeah, everybody can come. Everybody. It's not going to be free to them. Everybody is going to be treated the same coming in the gate. At 5 o'clock, if they want to come back, then it's going to be just for them. So the city, we're, we're only available from 10 to 4. 10 to 4 is, is, yeah. is a public But pool. the holiday city people can come too. They oh, just sure. Have to Anybody pay. can come from 10 to 4. But so. they have to pay too? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, can they use the pool any time right now under the current rules for this partnership? It's not open currently. Well, when it opens, if we weren't involved in this, was it free to them previously? It was free to them. Okay. Is there any kind of a financial benefit to holiday season for the for this uh, partnership? I, I wouldn't be the one to an be able to answer that. I, I really don't, I don't know what their financial. I mean, uh, is the city uh, paying them for the privilege of doing this? Other well, we're going to reimburse them for their, for their maintenance and for their staff. Which they'd be doing anyway. They would be doing anyway. So when you look at it at that standpoint, I would so venture to say there is, basically. they're going to get their, I mean, we're, we're probably going to recover all of their costs for their chemicals, okay. seeing as how we're this using it majority like of their time and their staff. So they'll they'll gain that from it, which they would do anyway. Well, what's the liability? What's what are you paying on lib liability insurance? Or I actually don't have that number yet. Um, we've reached out to our insurance, and I think we're working those numbers out. Yeah, well, the attorney will have that. Well, insurance would be pretty. Ex would it, would you expect the insurance to be high, low? Well, or? what what my understanding is is already as a municipality, we already have liabilities that's up there. So I don't know that a pool, in the grand scheme of things, is going to increase it a whole lot more because we're in the same pool as, I mean, not we're in the same <laughs> yeah we're in the same grouping as you know police and fire. You know we have lots of other things that liability wise, but to your to your point, for. For you to add a pool, then yes, it would increase your homeowners. At this point, my understanding is that it may not be as large as what we had anticipated, given if we keep it the same insurance rates that we have. How about parking? Levels. Parking is going to be a challenge. Parking is one area that we will um, need to address. We're hoping that people are comfortable with walking. There was a slide in the very beginning that right here, if you look, there's these spots right along the yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, right in long here. Um, uh oh. Um, 
That's really that's really it for parking, truthfully. So parking is going to be an area that we'll have to address and really just supervise. That's one of the reasons why we'll have a staff, we'll have a you know an attendant there to try and address. They're not in charge of uh, looking at you know and keeping an eye on the kids. They're going to be auxiliary to the lifeguard, so you never take your eyes off the kids in the pool. One of the other things about parking that we've talked about, I know Susan's working with transportation again, is it's right next to Northeast Creek Park. Yeah. There's a parking, there's massive parking right at the park. We've even talked about working with the transit system, even though it's not that far away of running the bus as, a, as some sort of route where it would pick people up in the parking lot. And there is currently a bus stop right. Right. where the so transit runs already. There's, so. there's, there's an opportunity. There's a challenge, but there's some opportunities there's, too for us to make it work. Yeah. There's a, there might be an opportunity across the street behind their building. They have like a vacant lot that we might be able to, you know, clear up a little bit and make it make it optional for parking. So we're looking at all of our options on parking. When did you say you're going to open up? When do you plan on opening? Right now, definitely June 30th. Ideally, we'll have some staff in place a little bit beforehand. How, so many, we can, how many lifeguards will we have on duty? We'll have two lifeguards. Two. And the, uh, the purpose is to you plan on breaking even, going above no. or going under? No, no we no. won't even, not even close. Truthfully, it, it was not intended to uh, break even. And that's actually in, indicative of if we were to have our own pool, <laughs> we would never break even. Every research I've ever done in every municipality and every pool that's ever actually an operation typically rarely ever breaks even. So this yes. experiment, for lack You're of a better terms, to, is if really a need for something bigger to. Sure, this will just. It's a great opportunity for a pilot program sure. for the city. You know, we'll collect residence. the data, we'll track the numbers, we'll track the attendance, and we will report back to uh, council everything that happens and see how it goes and, you know, um, we have that conversation further. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is what we're comfortable with, and if it works out well, this might be a way to meet the need, or we have other conversations. Will they have all food brought in, or will they have a vendor? Well, typically, um, we can sell some concessions. I think our idea is to sell some very basic you know, drinks and um, chips and those sort of things. We're able to do that. We've written that in so okay. far. Uh, that will be one way to, you know, maybe produce some revenue. What about the uh, maintenance of things that, that either wear out or get broken? Uh, with it's the gonna, number of people that are using those things, you'll It's going to be on their responsibility. <clears throat> and uh, so they already had that as a cap, as he was just saying. Wouldn't that, like, double since you're going to have more, more uses of the, of the pool? Due to the fact of putting the city out in the uses, so the pool is going to be using extra more for the chemicals and the staffing. And then also, are we having the person that you show on the staff? Would they be assisting that one guy who you said who runs the pool and the maintenance and stuff like that? Would, they, would he be able to get that knowledge on exactly how to operate this facility since this might be an ongoing thing? Okay, I want to make sure I answer. I think you had two questions. Okay, so for the first one was. Um, for the capacity, the capacity and the and, amount and, and, of and the amount of you, know, you said five thousand. I think it was up to twenty, uh, twelve, some uh, about twelve thousand, due to the fact that's what they cost for the um, the maintenance, and then that's what they cost for the su uh, supplies. You said I'm saying when that double with the, with the amount of usage of the pool. Well, I don't I don't know that um, the wear and tear will would happen regardless of the number of people in the pool. So, you know, they're going to have to maintain and, and, and maintenance those. The pool maintenance and the equipment that runs that, the pumps, for example, and all of the lines, those are going to get used regardless. That pump is going to be running regardless of if, whether or not you had 10 people or 40 people in there. The chemicals might get increased, yes. And if they come back and say, well, we used so many more, then obviously we'll address that. Right. I always make sure that it was still staying in that like say, you know, the least product that we are producing some type of the collaboration that we have with one another. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, your point is valid. I, I think we will just have to, we based it off of what they've used in the past. And so, um, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes, obviously. We've given them and we presented those numbers to them. If they're not comfortable with those numbers, we're working that out now. So they can certainly let us know and then we can go from there. We're certainly willing to you know, we want to we want to be good neighbors, and we want to make sure that we're not abusing or you know taking advantage. So it'll just be interesting. Truthfully, what they told us was the numbers are not as large, and when it gets really into the heat of summer, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of people out there at two in the afternoon. Right. It's just yeah. the pool water itself is 
85, 90 degrees. So, you know, it, it's, it'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to gauge. And we, when we choose this trial run due to the fact this is what we get, this is the information we got from the city on trying to get, get approved from the, from the uh, citizens of Jacksonville. Somebody's saying, yeah, yeah, we need approved, we need approved, mm -hmm. so this is going to be our, our run at it. Right. This is a way to, um, you know, this was a way to get a pool so that people can utilize it and see how it goes. You know, the splash pad is extremely successful. Um, and I think this is just an opportunity for us to provide another opportunity for them. Yes. What are we going to do about publicity? I mean, if it's a trial run, I'd like to make sure that Well, you'd be knows shocked it. at how well our Facebook does. And it's already hit the paper. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah. It was in front page last week. Mm -hmm. I saw so, Dr. Woodruff on TV talking about yeah. it. Yeah. So I don't think it'll take much, truthfully. We have, we luckily have over 9,000 fans on our Facebook page. 10, and 10,000. I'm so sorry. I, I lost 1,000. It just happened so quick. Um, word spreads really quick. I, I don't think. What about identification to get in the pool? Are they just going to charge anybody that comes in two or a dollar? Based on age, 12 and under is a dollar. We did lots of conversations about that and bands and all these simple. sort of things. But we, at the end of the day, we just want to keep it simple. Right. We just want to keep it, you know reasonable and we'll go from there you know well, again we'll we'll certainly track everything you going to offer any swimming classes or anything well we already offer swim lessons and we have actually offered swim lessons out of this pool in the past right now we don't um, we don't have any schedule for this pool because we're already booked and our swim instructor is already you know she's already scheduled out at the two other locations that we have them um, now if we have a demand for another class and she's available and we can schedule her then this certainly would be an opportunity in the morning hours before maybe that 10 o'clock opening which is how we operate our other ones at the two other pools that we use our two other pools just so you know it's a little bit loud down the list our swim lessons are being offered at two locations that is the reserve apartment complex and Arlington West um, two pools they're apartment complex pools and we utilize those pools before the public gets in them so if we were to have an opportunity to have a, a second instructor to offer say some here or on a Saturday then we might be able to do it before that 10 o'clock slot we've that's what we've offered here in the past as adult lessons on Saturdays any other questions I think the thing that's appealing to, about this venture is that um, we'll know something after a year uh, we may decide it very well could be that we expand to other locations sure. when things get tough and if we have to tighten our belt and pull up things and start getting things get rid of getting rid of things these are very easy things to dismantle without having a big hole in the ground that you gotta mm -hmm. figure out what to do with mm -hmm. that's a good point sure. but watch I appreciate it, watch it closely absolutely <laughs> I certainly appreciate the dialogue. We will certainly keep you posted as soon as it's up and running. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a exciting new adventure for us. So we'll keep you we'll keep you posted. Um, moving on, uh, we had a fantastic jamboree event a few weeks ago. We had a large crowd at the Commons. I appreciate everybody that supports us. If you help spread the word, or if you came out, I didn't see. You, I apologize, um, but it was a nice event. We had 80 basketball teams and. A bunch of softball. Eighteen. How so many? Eighteen softball teams. Eight. Okay, there you go. Lots of softball playing, lots of basketball, um, lots of amusements. Band, bands were nice. A talent show. So it was a nice. It was a nice day, and the weather held out for us for the most part. So we had a good turnout. Um, we also are very busy with our summer day camps. Our several of our locations are full for the summer, mm -hmm. and so if anybody's watching and they're curious about what their kids are going to do. Hurry up and call us, and we'll try and find you a spot. <laughs> but the Commons is pretty much full all sessions of my... Commons and Northwoods are full for all four sessions. We do have some availability with our base day camp, which is a, a nine to four um, weekday camp. So, yeah. Swim lessons, I think I already mentioned. Uh, I mentioned a minute ago about our movies in the park. We showed our first movie for the season on Friday night. It's estimated we had well over 500. It was a phenomenal night. Yes. One little bit of feedback. My sure. uh, granddaughters went. The sound wasn't that great. Do you need a little bit better sound, like more? Well, it depends on where they were. Do you know where they were sitting? Beats me. <laughs> <laughs> I, what, I, what we've heard, and we were getting longer chords, is that the crowd was so large 
that the farther back you got, the more of a challenge it was to hear. You delineated your sound. So we are going to uh, get longer chords for those speakers and what, try and get them, get them out a little bit farther. Good. Thank you. But yeah, no, you're, you're right on point because we had a staff member that got there and he had to sit way in the back because there was just no room. So it's a good problem to have, but we are going to work, work it out as far as trying to get those speakers a little bit farther into the crowd. So thank you. But it was a good day Friday. We had a camp out in one area of the, of the park. We had ball games going on on all the ball fields. We had a movie out front. It was a, it was a beautiful Friday night with lots of busy families and kids. And it was just really nice to see. It makes you proud to do what you do. Was How amazing. was the camp out? Because I saw that. In the 61 people came out. Wow. So we had, I want to say, six, seven, eight, about eight families in tents, if not more. And then other people that just came out and enjoyed. Yeah, it was a lot. We had a lot of tents out there. It was fun. And lots of, uh, you know, several people that just said, this is so easy. I don't have to worry about a whole lot. I just show up. The tent is set up. I get to go home in the morning and take a shower. You know what I mean? This is a this is the easy one when you have little kids and you don't want to really go into the woods and camp <laughs> and deal with all that. Just show up and we got it taken care of for you. So we do start our movies after the holiday. We start our whole summer of series of, of movies, concerts, and family park days. So we're excited. We have a full list, a full summer schedule planned. So after the holiday, there will not be a Friday that we don't have something booked, whether it's a concert or a movie. And we will go back and forth between the two for at least eight weeks. And then several Saturdays with our family park days. And it'll be fun. All right. I have talked a lot. <laughs> Any questions for me or anything else? Oh, I'm sorry. I do have one other notice. One other thing I want to let you know about, and that is the park and ride. Park and ride is the parking lot that we have let you know about on the um, uh, corner of where the adult ball fields are when you're coming into the commons on Gateway South. It's going to be on the right side of the pond. We are getting a new parking lot. It is through the um, Transportation Division and a grant through DOT. It is a substantial grant, and it is all funded through them, so we have no match on it. And we'll get about 150 to 200 new parking spots. So it's really going to be um, it's going to be fantastic for parking on the bus stops and the transit. Yes, absolutely. But also for our adult softball and the amphitheater. So that will be in place before the amphitheater. Um, gets online because it's going to be really needed for people to park there and go, go across the street to the amphitheater. So you will see some work getting done there. It's going to happen fairly quick. They're going to come in with a, um, our for the forester and kind of go ahead and harvest some of those trees and then um, move, move, move right along with that project. So It'll be good for next year's jamboree too. Yeah. It'll be, park right there. We're very excited about what it's going to do for our jamboree. So it might have a little bit different of a layout, Jamboree. We're still working through that, but it will be very nice for our Jamboree. Yes, it will be exciting. So that's one other project if in case you see somebody, you know, cutting down trees over there. Uh, yeah, it's all okay. There's not a lumberjack, but I guess there will be. So any questions for me? Any questions for Susan? I have one for Michael. Yes. Um, the propane on the back of the lawn tractors. How many? Do we still only have one? Oh no, we have. A we actually, tractors? you know, that's thanks for bringing that up. We have, I believe, it's four mowers now. Now we were up to about seven at one time, late last year. But what happened is uh, we had the we've had two things. We've you know as we've gone through this process, you learn some things. So remember, we bought mowers uh, that were 104 inches in width. Uh, which are Z-Track mowers, which are they're really efficient. It's what you'll see us mowing basically a lot of, of what we call open land with. Um, what we found out for some reason, those mowers uh, don't respond as well. We, we were constantly having problems with that uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and those mowers were done with propane tanks that were what were called aftermarket. So you can't buy that mower with a tank on it when you buy the brand new. So maybe that has something to do with, maybe that's why you can't buy that. So the aftermarket part of it wasn't working out. Now for our smaller mowers, 
our 72 inch mowers and our 60 inch mowers when we were taking it off of those we were putting it on the small smaller mowers because we already had one or two of them with those and we're, we're not running into problems with that but the larger mowers we we did run into some problem however the other thing you need to be aware of is about two weeks ago we're the first uh vehicle in the city to have a truck that is driven by propane and we're hoping to get a second one. Uh, we've been working with a garage that potentially there's some money that may be available to have a second truck done, done that way. So the way that, how does that work? You know, we, uh, the truck currently, uh, we run it with propane and there's a, as crazy as it sounds, there's a little the button on the dashboard that you shift it into the propane mode. Oh. And, um, we basically use the propane and when it we have a gauge and when it runs down we we have a tank at the office that we use to fill the mowers up we've had it retrofitted it can fill up the gas can't fill up the gas can fill up the propane tank there so uh it's we're, we're seeing how that works we haven't had any trouble with the vehicle yet it's been working for two about two three weeks with us uh, so it's worked out pretty good We'll see how it goes moving forward, and we're, we're anxious to have another vehicle done that way. Uh, both of those are done with a aftermarket um, add-ons to those uh, vehicles. So, and, and one of the reasons we do the aftermarket, just so you know, is aftermarket to, to do it is obviously at this threshold right. from a financial point. Uh, if you buy, for example, if you were going to buy a truck today, even from the city's perspective, who gets government prices, you know, you're looking at around 12 grand more to put that tank on there. And I was talking with the fleet guy and I said, you know, I don't think we can make 12 grand back over the life of the truck. I don't think we can drive it enough right. to make the money back on it. But we were, we paid less than half of that to do it. Now, it's not all about us and making money back. There's There's a value here if we find out uh, down the road, and when I mean down the road, I mean down the road, that all vehicles in the city, you know, right now it's, it's recreation and parks as trucks. It may one day be a uh, police department. I don't know. You know what I mean? It could evolve into those things, I mean, but we are the pilot program for it, and we don't have a problem with that. So thanks for bringing that up. And for those out there in TV land, no loss of power. I mean, you know, the fear that we've always heard is, you know, the myth is you lose power with propane. You're going to lose the, the towing capability. There's no loss of power. Well, if you need help mowing lawns, I'll gladly volunteer as long as I can ride a tractor. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I guess we'll move on to the council right here. Planning, Mr. Spring. Thank you. Uh, before I give my report, I, I get a chance to talk about the meeting. Uh, the location was great. It had been a while since I'd been there, and it really looked nice. And the food was even gr better, so uh, I love the food. Good. So bring that on any time. Okay. Um, they did a great job. Uh, yeah, thank you. Also, um, it, since we talked about the partnership with Holiday uh, Mobile Home City, um, about two or three meetings ago, the planning board was uh, approached about a, an overall development plan for Holiday Mobile Home City. So I've, I've been really, uh, with this partnership and with their plan, I, I think we've uh, reached a new uh, threshold or era where that's going to really, uh, we've given them the capability to get rid of some mobile units and come back in with some that are newer. And, and they, they seem to have uh, taken the ball and, and, and ran with it. So I'm very pleased with what we're seeing there. Um, I'm also, since I found this in the paper, before I give my report, the uh, Jacksonville, Onslow Jacksonville Hall of Fame has selected the Georgetown football team in 1955, the first state championship football team in Onslow County. Uh, Jack Bale, who can usually be seen uh, performing in the Nutcracker at the uh, mm -hmm. Christmas time. And uh, Ellis Dillahunt, who was running back for Jacksonville High School in the 80s, I think. But um, congratulations to those groups. In the Planning Advisory Board, the last thing we did was two rezonings on Piney Green Road. And we, we noted that this is the first of what we think may be some other rezonings that occur. The first rezoning was actually uh, close to the intersection of Piney Green Road and 17. The second rezoning was a little further down 
near the flower shop. I, I don't know if you're familiar with that area, mm -hmm. but we, we, we voted to, um, we recommended rezoning from residential to a commercial corridor, which is what they anticipated that area would be. We noted some concerns with access to Piney Green Road, and it turns out that they've limited access somewhat, Piney Green Road, so a lot of people will have to do that Michigan left where they have to go down and turn around, but uh, that's okay. We also uh, asked about uh, extraterritorial jurisdiction, and it seems that there's a, a move in the legislature to limit that and basically do away with as much uh, ETJ as possible. The city, in their proactive stance, is looking at what areas we can effectively drop off and give to the county. Uh, just so you know, we don't get any money from ETJ areas. Uh, they don't pay any property tax. The thing we do, what we do get out of that is, is we do get some sort of zoning and enforcement control. We will probably always have some ETJ because some of these areas are in our major uh, gateways and we want to have some control over how things look when you come into the city. But um, it, from a, when you have no ETJ, it, it basically means that you will have fewer people petitioning to, fewer groups petitioning to join the city because uh, annexation, you, you won't have forced annexation. So all annexation will be voluntary, which means if you get areas that get really close to the city, I'm thinking like, for example, Carolina Forest, Carolina Plantation. You have the people in Carolina Forest that are city residents. You have the people in Carolina Plantation that are not city residents. You have an after-school program at Carolina Forest. You may one day be looking at changing some of your fee structures for out-of-city residents, but just because you're, you're going to see that happen in more areas on the fringes of the city. Just, just thought I'd point that out, and I'm going to be quiet for a while. Thank you. All right. I'm going to throw the ball back at you. Go ahead and do your park report. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. Phillips Park uh, looked, looked great, uh, except it looked like a, there was a crooked board on the Ninja, on the very first Ninja tube as you come in. It, it looked like it was kind of catty, what did we call it, cattywamp? Cattywamp. Yeah. Uh, also, um, in Sherwood Forest, there was, uh, that area looked great, uh, except there's still quite a bit of grass in the playground area, and Branch would look fine. Okay. Mr. Bill? Uh, uh, Wooten Park was great. They had just cut the grass when I was out there Saturday morning. And uh, bathrooms, water fountain, basketball, uh, nets, everything looked good, really good. And I'd like to add what Homer said about the dinner. Y'all did a really good job. Food was great. Very well organized, very informative. So y'all did a super job. We'll pass it on to management. Mr. Steve? Uh, first, uh, I was downtown, and it uh, looks like they completed painting the caboose. Mm -hmm. Looks caboose really nice. Finished. All the markings on it and everything else. So all the railroad fans should be really happy about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Northeast Creek, uh, I go out there multiple times a week with the dog, and we wander all over the place. So it always looks nice. Uh, it's really busy now. Uh, especially in the go in the evenings and the playground is packed with kids and there's always somebody playing frisbee golf no matter what the weather right. and then they're playing baseball now so it, it looks fine uh i still wish we could work on the boardwalk because it looks pretty bad but other than that the place looks nice and well used thank you all right mr jim Let's see brook valley i was by there on sunday and there were uh, Two families out there with kids and one dog. The dog seemed to be enjoying himself out there. <laughs> and then I hit uh, Northwoods on the way to the meeting tonight, and everything's going fine there. Uh, they did tell me they're still having some problems with some dead limbs falling down. And not to get into the details, but I think that the schedule that the city's going to go by and do some trimming over there. There's a big oak tree right there. Oh, yeah. And there's a... Uh, picnic table underneath it and uh, I think some limbs we've had some close calls and so I think trimming is scheduled well we've hired somebody yeah. you know that's not trimming we could do internally but they have uh, I think we've hired somebody to go out there and identify some limbs the dead us. limbs yeah. yeah great shade tree which is like oh, yes. 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 it. it's huge but yes right, Mr. Bernard um, hello everybody good evening uh, <clears throat> on 
Excuse me, guys. Well, Wilson Bay, first uh, Wilson Bay have uh, been very nice for a lot of people using it. Of course, uh, when I went out there uh, last week, a uh, lot of couples out there, a lot of families out there, and it's been used real well. Except for that, that the, the water fountain in the center of the park is still, I think, inoperable at this time. It is actually inoperable. We've had FMS out there, and, mm -hmm. and just I know that's been a source of, uh, you know, we've kind of been band-aiding that that water fountain our intentions are when the budget year rolls over to get a new water fountain for wilson bay as well as sherwood and phillips i believe and the, the, the trails are have, have looking well like i said i didn't haven't read i haven't rode all the trails lately but i speak to people because i we go, go in the area towards bill folk homes a lot people riding trails so a lot of people are out now because of summer so people are walking in as well as riding it as well and i probably be um uh, just think about some names probably coming down as there as well because of all the high winds we've been having lately. Um, and Woodlands Park, Woodlands Park is always uh, looking good, always nice, useful, very useful. Again, very, very useful. <laughs> well, <laughs> soccer teams and stuff like that coming up. And uh, that was my report. Sorry. All right, thank you. Mr. Joseph. Hey, good evening. Um, you know, Mike, you were mentioning earlier about Riverwalk and the sodding and stuff like that, but you normally expect with all that dirt to just be spread all over the place and onto the streets and otherwise, but I don't know who's keeping it as clean, but your people are doing fantastic because everything's Thanks. still within the areas there. It's always neat and clean, and every time I go out there, we have people that are constantly running, riding their bikes, uh, you know, just lounging there on the benches, even when they're not looking at grass and they're looking at dirt, they're still sitting there at the benches and staring at it, so they're, they're relaxed and they love the areas out there, and it's great, uh, especially when you keep going down a little bit further when you get down towards Kerr Street, you're looking at the pier. People are always fishing off the pier out there. Um, you know, uh, they, they have some uh, concerns. Some of the people that have been around for a while, they want to know if they, you know, ever going to extend the pier out and how much further into the water they can go because they say the best fishing is in the areas they can't get to. That or they want us to channel the fish a little bit closer to them, but you know, that's about <laughs> as far as they got for that. Um, they do have some, uh, some concerns in the area. I know we've spoken offline at some points about it. I think the biggest thing that they're saying is that um, restrooms are probably the hardest thing that's out there. And I, I, I remember in the past that that's been brought up at some point in time. There's only those two that are there at the uh, Kerr Street Rec Center. Uh, that's obviously a main construction area. That would be a huge construction project just to build a restroom area and not knowing exactly what the park looks like in the future. We don't want to spend that kind of money or that long of a project to get something done. Uh, the other thing that they were looking at uh, was um, when they're on the piers, uh, even though it's getting lighter or staying lighter later during the summer months, it's still dark for several hours while they're on the pier. And the closest light is across the street from there. So I don't know if there's a way that they would be able to get one more extension light or maybe one of those LED type lights that you guys have over the uh, basketball courts somewhere near closer to the pier right. for the evening hours. Something can come on maybe just, you know, uh, just for those darker hours that they have over there. Uh, but some uh, short-term wins that they were looking at, as we mentioned earlier, uh, some bike racks, a few more may be put out that way, uh, just because there are a lot of bikes that they've been using more and more during the summer to put out. And um, they were also suggesting a horseshoe pit somewhere maybe behind the, uh, uh, by, behind where the tennis courts are in between the basketball. They're, they're, they've already identified a nice big grass area that they said, hey, would be perfect if we lined it up here. But I figure those are short wins. It should be relatively inexpensive if there's any way to get a few things out there. But other than that, uh, they, everybody seems to love that area down there. More and more people are coming in, I guess, with the more and more bugs coming in. So it's great watching everybody out there and having a good time. It looks really opened up with that marina, too. Did you notice? Yes, it, it is. It's very nice it's out that way. Right up. And I think from it's Susan and, and my seat, as well as probably some of management seat or most of management, once we get the marina up and going, your bathrooms are going to be resolved. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, has the yeah. kayak guy started back out there? He yeah. has. Okay. Yes. Okay. And the weather has already given him a very good start to the season. So. Yes. Okay. Well, I peg, piggybacking off of that, um, my family used the Jacksonville Landing the last couple weekends, and I don't know who maintains the docks there because one of the docks is collapsing. The dock? Yeah, one of the one of the boat ramps that you pull up to, mm -hmm. the walking one. The the, one the yeah. The one ahead. if you're looking at them. Well, if you're on the water, it's the one on the all the way to the right. But on the restroom side. Yes. Okay. So. Well, if you're looking. Okay. If you're coming in. Off if you're coming the in water. on the left. Off the water. Yeah, closer to the. Bridge. The 17 bridge, yeah. yeah probably has a leak in the tank. Those are pneumatic thing. Right. Yeah. So I, we just noticed that on Saturday when we were there. Um, but uh, Richard Ray looks great. I noticed they, they changed some of the bushes out. 
We've done looks, some landscaping. Yeah, so it looks Thanks really for good. Noticing. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Um, comments, like everyone else has mentioned, people are getting out there using our, our parks, and everyone seems to be having a great time. Uh, Jack Emiette always looks good. I've noticed here lately a lot of uh, basketball playing in the evening. Um, looks like some groups that are going out there. Uh, I didn't know that the sign. I don't know if there's a part we're going to look at that. But well, we're, we're in a transitional time right now with right. signage in the city where we're trying to brand our signs. And um, so, yes, we're, yeah, we it's are. Okay. It's okay. It's just, it could it's, be better. Uh, it's right. Agreed. So, I think we all and then, uh, again, what Mr. Joseph was saying, that area, when we took our boat out there, there was a lot of folks out there kayaking. I, I just didn't see the guy in his rack out there utilizing that area. Um, and there's fish out there, because the fish finder told me. <laughs> <laughs> and just so everybody knows, this splash pad opens this weekend. Yep, so right. it'll be full steam ahead come this weekend until after Labor Day. So. I have one came out, uh, same round, I guess. Uh, I want to go ahead and say that, that dinner was good. good. So the whole conception of how they displayed it, and you did a great job in your presentation. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the yeah, appreciate that. Right. I do appreciate that. Anybody additional? Uh, several meetings ago, there was discussion about a dog park. Any progress on that? Yeah, I think right now the dog park has kind of been tabled, and uh, we'll look to see if that re-energizes re it itself moving forward. Okay. I think one of the reasons that the dog park idea is, even though people have asked about the dog park, I've noticed, at least at Sherwood, that there are a lot, of, quite a few people that use that as a dog park, um, and then there are a few at Phillips that do the same. So, well, they're, they're, it's anyway. very popular to bring your dog to the commons and walk walk with you. I mean, it's and and I know Steve, you are well aware that the trail out at Northeast Creek. Uh, that's a very popular place oh, yeah, for yeah. people to bring their dogs out there, so, which is good. It is. It is. Dogs have become very noticeable. I will just Everywhere. say for the public knowledge, we do have challenges with people putting the dogs on the ball fields and just letting them go and not necessarily cleaning up after them. So I would just ask if anybody, please, uh, we really don't want the dogs on our game fields. Right. It's really just not sanitary for our kids to be on those fields and playing and out in the outfield, but we certainly are dog friendly. Yeah. Just try not on the ball fields if we could. Those aren't those are not the locations for a dog park. <laughs> Please. Yes. <laughs> Keep them on. Right, anybody else? A dedication of the uh, trail extension has that been scheduled yet? As of right now, that uh, there is a certain uh, section that has not been released to us. The easement has not been given to us from from the base. So until we get that easement up underneath Wilson uh, Gate, Wilson, um, that area. Until we get that easement, we will probably hold off until all that's all said and done. That's my last under That's point. absolutely, because it's, it's, not, it's not ours yet. Yeah. It's a great question. Next meeting is July 24th at 6 o'clock. Motion adjourned. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Lots of info.